This is the most hyped up camera I've ever seen. Everybody is talking about it on every social media platform. They call it the TikTok camera and the resale price just keeps going up. It's the best photography camera of 2023, the Fujifilm X100V. That came out in 2020. Wait, what? It did? Yeah, it's a glorified point and shoot that you can't even change lenses on that Gen Z hyped up because they're idiots. Your reaction is probably like mine. You're thinking, there's no way that this camera is that good. Until you realize you're a boomer and that this camera is incredible. Let me tell you how this became my all-time favorite photography camera. Also, check out these new ND filters from Peter and Polar Pro. They got magnets. That's pretty satisfying. I'll tell you guys more in a second. Okay, so let's talk about what is it, why is it so popular, and why is this the best photography camera I've ever owned? For me, photography has always been more of a side thing. My main thing is filmmaking, and so I'm constantly trying to find casual, fun ways to get photos, really nice photos, without having to lug around a bunch of gear. I ended up trying an old point and shoot film camera, which was great and I loved it until I realized I'm never gonna get these photos developed. Then I tried the Leica Q2 and oh man, I love that thing. It's a beast of a camera. It's so nice looking and the image you get from that small little camera is so nice. But then I realized I never end up editing the photos from it. And it's like $6,000, which is crazy. Keep in mind, I have a lot of cameras, but this would be a camera that's more for like capturing memories and fun times and experiences with friends and family. That's when a friend told me that people shoot in JPEG on the Fujifilm X100V and essentially emulate film looks in camera. And then it clicked. I went online to go buy one. Can't. They're all back ordered. You can't get one anywhere. So I checked the used markets. They're double the price now. They've literally doubled the price from brand new to used. You're paying double. I've never seen a digital camera go up in value. So I reached out to Fujifilm to ask if they might have one in a dusty corner that's not being used that I could borrow because I need to find out why is this thing so popular. And here we are a week later, and this is my favorite photo camera I've ever owned. So what the heck is it? It's a 26.1 megapixel APS-C camera. <laughs> it's not even full frame? Nope. It's got a 23 mil Fujinon lens f2.8. It's got a built-in flash ND filter, and it looks like an old film camera. And this is the game-changing part. The photos also look like they've been taken on a film camera. With this, you can instantly get film-like photos. The edit is there right away, and then you can just transfer it to your phone or give it to a friend, and they can post it without any editing. It looks like film. And this is the part that did it for me and why I think this camera is so popular. And the film looks, they call them recipes. And basically there's a whole bunch of settings in here for the JPEGs and you can dial them in so that they emulate different film stocks and that's what they're calling recipes. And funny enough, I used to think it was completely overkill that Fuji cameras had all of those different settings for the look. And now <laughs> I just wish I had more and I wish I had them on every single camera that I own. They're so good that I actually don't even shoot raw on this thing. You could shoot both the JPEG and the raw. I just shoot the JPEG because I really like the looks that I'm getting straight in camera. But here's how I've been using this camera and what recipe I'm using. So first off, I basically throw out everything I know about photography and I shoot full auto. I essentially have all the settings on auto, except I choose the f-stop that's on the lens here. Basically, I'm just in f2 all the time. And then I use the exposure compensation wheel to just dial in whether I want it to be a little bit lighter or darker. Turn on the flash if it's really dark and I want that look, or then turn on the ND filter right there if it's really bright outside, because it has a built-in ND filter, and that's it. And if your camera doesn't have ND filters built in, which of 
probably doesn't. These are the brand new Helix Magnetic Lock ND filters from Polar Pro and my best friend, Peter McKinnon. And if you've ever been in a situation like I have a thousand times where you're inside and then you gotta go outside, but you gotta make everybody stop because you have to put on your ND filter and you're struggling with it and it's not going on and then you drop it and it's super embarrassing and you finally get it on there, you go outside only to realize you're going back inside and you gotta struggle with your ND filter and take it off again. This is for you. So basically, all you gotta do is screw on this little helix ring once. Now that's on there and let's say we're filming outside and we gotta go outside and you need an ND filter, just grab your ND filter, line it up, twist to lock, and that's on there and then you can just use your ND filter as you please. And then you're coming back inside, grab that off. <laughs> it's that fast. Or you can grab another filter, line it up, pop that on there. This is super fast, super easy, but it's also just really well made. These are so solid. As soon as you pick this up, you're like, okay, this is legit. I also like the fact that they made the helix ring a little bit wider, so that way you're not getting any of that vignetting from the ND filter on a really wide lens that you sometimes get on other ND filters. They have two to five stop and six to nine stop, both with and without mist, which is kind of like a, like a diffusion. Then they also have that mist by itself and other filters, and I really like this system. I hope they just keep expanding and giving us more filters, because this is just so fast and easy. I hate struggling with the whole screwing this on and off. And then you can buy more of these helix rings and just put them on the lenses that you use most. So if you only have one ND filter, you can just have a few of these rings and then pop them on and off according to what lens you're using. So why are these better? Because I made them. <laughs> <laughs> Easy answer. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of truth in there. They're magnetic, man. It's fast. Oh, man. Yes. I was just telling him about that. You know that like indoor, outdoor, and you're struggling to take it off and you drop yes. the filter. And yes. Just... Or it goes in your back pocket. Then you forget it's in your back pocket. You put your keys in your back pocket. Next thing you know, your filters are all scratched. Scratched then You're trying up, yeah. to find the cases for them, but they're in a bunch of different pieces. Nice and compact. One unit. Magnetic. Trying to make it as easy as possible. Man, you're just so freaking good at this stuff. Remember when you taught me how to use an ND? <laughs> yeah. Do I get like uh There's a check like royalties one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when when you get to a certain age, it's when it pays out. All right, I'll be waiting <laughs> yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. 104. Perfect. <laughs> it's really great. Thanks guys for making my life a whole lot easier and thanks Polar Pro for sponsoring this video. When it comes to the recipes or film looks, I haven't really had time to experiment a ton, but I basically just kind of dialed in a look that I liked and I've actually been really enjoying it. And so far, that's the main one that I've been using. So I'll go through what settings I've dialed in and what I understand of the settings so far. So first off, for the film emulation, I've been trying Astia Soft. Um, I feel like you could use pretty much any of these, but they're just all very different looks. I also really like the classic negative a lot, but right now I've been using Astia Soft. For the grain effect, I've been going strong and small, and so this is basically just, you're choosing how much grain, film grain, you want there to be in the photo. And I don't know, lately I just really like kind of dirtying up the frame a little bit. And what I mean by that is it's just making it look like it's not so perfect. I'm just so bored of perfect, clean, and clinical. Everything looks like that. The color chrome effect, I don't fully understand or know exactly what it does, but I think it's a bit of like a, like a desaturation in a filmic way. And so I have that on strong right now. Same with the color chrome FX blue. I, I don't exactly know what this is doing, but from my test, I just, I liked it. And so I have it on strong. The white balance is interesting because I have it on auto, but then you can dial in kind of a shift. So I, I like the white balance to be a little bit cooler and a little bit on the green side. And so I have my uh, white balance on uh, reds minus two and blues minus one. The dynamic range I have on DR400. And this is probably one of my favorite things about the Fujifilm is how it treats the highlights. The highlights are really just nice and like slowly rolled off. Unlike digital where it's, you just kind of go straight to white. 
I feel like the highlights are really nice when you're doing this workflow. And I've just gone all out. Basically, the higher the number, the more fake dynamic range you're getting. And film it has an insane dynamic range, so I'm just pushing it right now. And I've liked the results. D range priority, not sure what it does. I have it on off right now. Tone curve, I have the highlights on minus two and the shadows on minus two. I'm just trying to get a lot of dynamic range. Color, I have it at zero right now. Sharpness, plus one, just to give a little bit of sharpness, which I counteract that in a second. Noise reduction, minus one, and then clarity, minus two. So I like taking away some clarity, which makes it look a little bit more organic to me but then add a little bit of sharpness to get some of that detail back. And then I have the exposure compensation, usually down about a half stop or maybe even a little bit more. I just, I like things a little bit more moody. And that's it, that's my recipe right now. I didn't look up any yet. I don't know any of the most popular ones, but I really like the photos that I've been getting out of this camera and I've really been enjoying just how fast and easy it is to use. I can take a photo, you know, a family photo or a group photo and send it to my friends instantly and it's already edited, it already looks great and they can post it right away. But I've barely played around with the recipes yet and it, that's kind of a fun thing, trying new recipes and seeing what kind of photos you get and just look how nice these photos have been coming out without any editing. These are straight out of camera JPEGs. One of the things I was worried about though was this lens. It's a 23 mil on an APS-C, so it's about a 35 mil full frame lens, which is fairly tight. And usually I like having a little bit more wider of a focal length, but I actually didn't know. They have these little like lenses or lens adapters. They're not quite full lenses. One to make the camera 28 mil full frame equivalent, so a little bit wider, and one to make it a 50 mil equivalent. These are really interesting. You basically just take this little, screw that on there, and now you have a 28 mil instead of a 35 mil. And for me, I've really been liking this one especially. It does make it a little bit bigger, obviously, but uh, it's kind of just like nice to hold on to. I really like it. And then I like that it's a little bit wider. That's just a personal preference, but it's, it's nice to know that these exist. Okay, so you're probably thinking like I was, this is old news. Every Fuji camera has this why, why, why? And I think it's all in the nuance. I think it's a combination of the fact that this is a small camera, really easy to carry around. It looks cool, so you kind of also look cool taking photos with it. Like if you're hanging out with your friends and you pull this out, everybody's like, oh sick, what camera is that? Whereas like a lot of the DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, they just look kind of stupid. The looks are incredible, probably the biggest thing. And then you can just post it right away. The workflow is super fast and for, you know, social media world and content, content, content. I think people love this for that. And I think we're all looking for a little bit of nostalgia. We're looking to kind of like change things up a little bit, dirty up the frame a little bit, not have everything be so clean and clinical. And I think the Fujifilm X100V is like this generation's finding your dad's old film camera and realizing like, oh, this is actually really, really great. Except this thing is way <laughs> easier to use than a film camera and honestly, I really, really like this. I'm not hyping it up. I plan on using this probably as like my main photo camera, especially with family and friends and special events and all of that kind of stuff. And honestly, I want these color tools on every camera out there and more tools that claims to be a photo camera. We should have like almost the equivalent of like Lightroom inside of these cameras so you can just dial in your look and then have the RAW and your JPEG all at once. That should be the future. Thanks Fujifilm for sending this and uh, letting me check it out. It's good. I was surprised. I thought I was gonna be like, ah, no, it's, it's not that good. People are just stupid idiots, but uh, yeah, I'm sold. All right, bye.